Welcome back everyone to the third episode of us playing as Vietnam or the Socialist Republic of Vietnam in Red Dusk. I'm your host, Mr. Uh, not Iraq lover. Well, it depends on the campaign, but Vietnam lover. But a report on the situation in Cambodia. The situation in Cambodia has become increasingly tense with Cambodia's 2003 general election approaching. The opposition Fun uh, Party announced its withdrawal from the ruling coalition last September and is calling for a boycott of the upcoming elections. The conflict between the two largest parties in the country is getting more and more out of control, and it seems that another civil war in Cambodia is inevitable without timely intervention measured. Our intelligence in Cambodia believes that the Funia Sipek is planning a coup with the help of disloyal elements in the military. Whether that's true or not, we need to warn Cambodian comrades of this potential danger. We need to keep an eye on this, of course. And of course, like I said, we're in Iraq. We're having a good old time. We're doing whatever we can. Civil war in Yemen. Oh, uh, well, we can't even get invested then. Can we? Yemeni? Or Iraqi civil war? Yeah, we're really screwed. Um, but, since we've gone this far anyways, education reform. The Ministry of Education and Training, MOET, have proposed resolution number something. With the goal to improve the quality of the comprehensive education for the young generation, meet the requirements of human resource development to serve the country's industrialization and modernization, and approach a general education level of developed countries in the region and around the world. MOET also affirms the ministry itself must focus on all its resources in order to erase the plaguing rote learning phenomenon and promote the self-study attitude among students. At the very least, we need to hold every territory we have. A coup in Cambodia. A coup took place as expected, but it came so quickly and unexpectedly. Now that we and the Phnom Phen government were completely unable to react to it. A large number of soldiers with armored vehicles entered the capital, Phnom Phen, overthrown the government of Chia Sim, declaring martial law and banning the Cambodian People's Party. General Secretary Chia Sim, along with several key members of the government, were captured by the rebels. Fortunately, Prime Minister Hun Sen managed to flee to the east in time, and was calling on the people and loyal military forces to rally and fight the reactionaries. It seems this scenario that we uh, least want is about to come true. Screw the, screw it. Call the headquarters of the Southern Military Districts now. Chaos in Cambodia, huh? Oh, that's not good. Oh no. Y'all best be ready to move. Ready the army. Vietnam's mobilizing their army, the ally in need. Ally. Oh. Reorganize the KPRAF. Alert the Laotian government. Laotian government. Send military advisors. Begin the liberation war. Well, help our Cambodian comrades and liberate the Cambodians once for all. <clears throat> Add fourth Indonesian war. Increase volunteers. Here we go again. The new exam method. The Ministry of Education and Training has proposed a unified exam format, standardized results, and a common exam day coupled with the application of information technology to admissions. Marking a significant turning point for the country's education system. The encoded exams answers, scoring instructions, and exam results will publicly be announced on the internet, which will reduce negative aspects in the exams. Organize, organizing admissions by clusters is expected to significantly reduce the number of exam registrations and examinees, effectively addressing the overload of major cities and saving budget for the government. The standardized exams from the Ministry of Education and Training both lighten the burden of schools and provide a common standard for input uh, quality. Exam content requires candidates to have solid fundamental knowledge, strong synthesis skills, and limits the use of crib notes, ensuring fairness for students across the region. However, the new admissions method may lead to the phenomenon of ghost candidates, and many schools may struggle to determine the actual number of candidates. The lack of widespread adoption of transfer to software is expected to pose a challenge to Vietnam's technological proficiency, potentially causing discrepancies in candidate profiles, cutoff scores, and registration preferences. The new exam format will also render rote learning and passive setting obsolete, resulting in varied exam outcomes. Therefore, some schools may need to request the Ministry of Education to consider alternative additional preferences to meet enrollment targets, however. Overall, the new draft is still a positive step towards greater fairness for students. Interesting. Honestly, I'm gonna, at this point, I'm just going to do something like gamey here. I'm going to use cons commands probably and get rid of the debt, the deficit, so we can at least like back which either side that we want to do, and then re-give myself the negative political power, because this is just not, not, not cool. The way we have this set up right like this right now. I don't think this is very nice. I don't think this is very good. So. Because we gotta do all this stuff too. Begin the Liberation War. Here we go again. V Vietnamese Liberation or Volunteer Army. 
Uh, mobilize the economy. Maybe we lose even more political power. Are you freaking kidding me? Why would we do that? Ho trail, Ho Chi Trail Mail, tra Trail. Oh. Because there's literally no other way to get political power. Obviously, this mod is still getting worked on. It's still going to hopefully get updated because yeah, I mean, they're still missing some uh, text and whatnot. But like, bro, George, universal health insurance. The development expansion of health insurance not only to ensure the goal of socializing the people's health care, but also considered a basic measure to ensure the sustainability of the health insurance policy. In order to implement health insurance for 70% of the population in 2010, we need to have an appropriate policy to expand the compuls compulsory and voluntary participants in health insurance, along with changes in the affording and receiving amount, responsibility, and obligations of entities within the health insurance relations. Especially in our country, nearly 80% of the population is low-income farmers, which health insurance needs access to provide health care for them. And a massive anti-crime campaign. The aftermath of what Cam Nam or Nam Cam and his slugs did for the last 20 years not only shows massive loopholes in our anti-organized crime but laws, but also showed how bribing has corrupted our public security forces, even the high-ranking ones. And with the Congress having agreed on the amendment of the tw Criminal P Procedure Code and the formation of the Special Investigation uh, Z5.01 on Nam, Nam Cam, the public believed that this was the government's declaration of war against all organized crime in Vietnam. Which would be nice. Doesn't help us that much, but but it's nice. So I just did what I said I would. Like I gave us gave myself political power so we can get rid of the political power, so we can spend it, so we can actually get some political power back because this is just ridiculous. So uh, we're gonna actually maybe not completely die here. So but we're doing okay in Iraq. Iraq's a nice place this time of year, apparently. Oh, so we can still actually benefit and do stuff here. Begin the Liberation War. Yeah. Mm, why don't we do this one first, maybe? Because I want to finish this part off. Maybe not. So we did this one earlier, so we did that one too. Oh, there we go. The National Government of the Republic of Yemen extends its sincere thanks to the government of Vietnam for providing material and international support and keeping our iron well nation safe from the, those willing and infringing on its sovereignty. It is of most importance that in a world of increasing weakness, our countries unite in strong cooperation. Well, sorry to the anti communists, but it is what it is. Man, Syria's hit a little harder than normal. That's alright. Hello. They are hitting pretty darn hard. But they'll probably exhaust themselves before we're done. That's good XP too, so. Wondrously good XP. Especially since I threw on another uh, thing on the infantry. I threw on the motorized artillery just so you can have a little more soft attack too. So, I guess we'll begin the liberation war next. Decently. But our arty is good. Just even give more soft attack. Super important. Destroy the Nam Kam Gangster Organization. The organized crime group led by Throng Van Kam, also known as Nam Kam, the largest of its kind in the country, has been dismantled by the police force. The rampant activities of the gangster organization have posed a hidden threat to the lives of the people in Ho Chi Minh City and the southern provinces for many years, also casting doubts on the integrity of the legal institutions in Ho Chi Minh City. However, the determination of the police force, as expressed by the leadership, is that if there's sufficient evidence, there will be no cover-up or internal handling. Recently, Ho Chi Minh City, there's been a spat of bloody gang-related incidents in a short period, such as the shooting deaths of two underworld bosses, a clash between two criminal gangs resulting in the stabbing shooting death of Thrang Ngoc Ng in front of the Metropolis Hotel, and the brawl outside the Tien Ha nightclub, indicating that the power and profit struggle among organized crime gangs have reached its peak. More seriously, some gangland groups have shifted their op operations to contract killings and hired attacks based on other orders. Therefore, the dismantling of the group led by Nam Kam marks a significant step towards the cleansing of the underworld and restoring order in Ho Chi Minh City. Interesting. Begin the liberation war. So, goodbye, Iraq.
We're doing the best we can for you, but it is what it is. You guys been here? There we go again. Long, now middle-aged man, has dedicated most of his life to serving the people of Vietnam. He tried on the struggle to deliver Cambodia before and now. Once again, he sets aside on the Bangkok as the next target. Memories of his youthful days filled with patriotic fervor flood his mind. He fought alongside comrades against American imperialists and the lapdogs in Saigon. The war had been long and brutal, with gunfire bombed and devastating effects on na napalm. The images of burned and twisted bodies still haunting him afterwards. And after the war, he adventured into Cambodia to bring down the tyrant and mercilessly slaughter millions. The sight of starving villagers remains etched in his memory for years to come. Now, Long found himself in the observer's boot, both still engaged in the battles for liberation, but this time commanding a tank squadron. While he had always favored traditional infantry tactics in forested areas, the realities of modern warfare had made him realize the practicality of other approaches, aiming to minimize further loss of life. This would be a nightmare. Over the final war, Long con contemplated, uh, there must be an end to their suffering, an end to their struggle for liberation. This will be the downfall of imperialists in Indochina. It must be or else. He stopped his worrisome thoughts, reminding himself that this is not the time to be concerned. As a commanding officer, he had to focus on observing his unit's movements in Cambodia. Leaving his makeshift office in the army camp, <coughs> uh, Long emerged with a whistle in hand, ready to issue the order to advance. Surveying the vast columns of tanks before him, poised and moved forward towards freedom, he felt a surge of pride. For a fleeting moment, the thrill of the imminent battle coursed through his veins. With one blow of the whistle, the final strike of the sword was delivered, guided by the call of the man who once stood in the same position as his comrades. Welcome back to heck. There's a lot of jungles and whatnot, so I, oh, well, mostly just sent infantry. Yeah, a little bit of experience actually. Hmm. I need to send up a lot of eh? We're just gonna pad the line for now until we get literally directly involved. Let our guys hold here for now. As long as the Iraq, they can hold off against the Syrians, it's fine. Do I see any volunteers? Oh, oops. Failure in the stock market due to the instability in the Indochina region. The VN index stock index has plummeted drastically. Many investors consider this to be the lowest point for the Vietnam stock market compared to every year ago when the VN index has scored once above 400 points. With the restrictions on selling in place, the Vietnamese stock investors can only help for long-term benefits and year-end dividend rates when holding on to stocks. The involvement of foreign investors has not had a significant and positive impact on the market. They are prepared to hold on to capital for many years, waiting for the prices to rise. However, given the recent worrying developments in Cambodia, they have lost patience and begun gradually selling stocks to withdraw capital. Currently, the State Securities Commission has developed numerous recovery plans with the ambition of, a bit, uh, of developing a massive number of listed companies, modern trading floors, and market share in the economy. However, both investors and securities companies regard these initiatives as very unclear. Well, we will get through this. Alright, so if we're going to do anything here. Fighting the jungles is going to freaking suck. Um, I want to concentrate our forces here, maybe. Here, let me pick you up, Marshall, too. And then what? Vietnamese Volunteer Army? Sure. As long as we can hold up in the north, that's what I care about the most. Hold, 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 hold. Can any of you guys get here? No, that's what I thought. Alright, so with you guys. Can all eight of you attack there? Let's see what you can do. Oh, you're attacking through this here too, okay. War in the Shadow. Yeah, okay. Revealing higher ranking officials involved in Nan Kam's case. For a long time, the notorious criminal gang by Nan Kam has extended its tentacles from the south to north, uh, engaging in activities such as murder, usury, organized gambling, drug trafficking, and bribery. 
Behind these activities lies a cover-up and collusion of many high-ranking officials and law enforcement agencies from the central to local levels. The entire society was shocked when these revelations came to light. After uh, Tuong Van Kam was arrested, the Politburo directed the special task force of the Ministry of Public Security to thoroughly and decisively handle the Kingpin's network. Based on non coms confessions and testimonies from his associates, several individuals were prosecuted for the involvement with his underworld gang, including Thran Mai Han, Central Committee Member, Director General of the Voice of Vietnam, Bui Quoc Hoi, Central Committee Member, Deputy Minister of Public Security, and Fan Si Chien, Deputy Chief Prosecutor of the Supreme People's Procuracy. Additionally, the Prime Minister declared to dismiss and demote Hong Ngoc Na, Deputy Minister of Public Security, due to his involvement in the case. At a lower level, two deputy directors of Ho Chi Minh City Police, uh, Than Than Huimin and Vo Vang Meng, were also dismissed, while many police officers and prosecutors were dis prosecuted or disciplined. The Nan Cam case and its compasses have completed phase one of the investigation, resulting in a in voluminous conclusion report of over 600 pages, with only 55 individuals prosecuted. Relevant authorities are now focusing on reviewing these case files to expedite the trial as soon as possible. Interesting. Yeah, since you're here, you must help out. Alright, so with this in mind, we're going to stop attacking like this. Because I need you to concentrate just on Cambodia. The goal is to take out one enemy at a time. Oh, good. What is this killing us from? Towards the social society, I hate that. The fourth end of China. Oh my god. Come on. Bro. Jesus. Sabotage Funisipek. Fusinpek. Whoa, 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 whoa. I do not want to be like this. We gotta concentrate our forces. Concentrate them. Basic automation's good. We're just gonna keep going with at least one on factors at all times. We pretty much have to at this point. Nice. And then what? Mobilize the economy? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm literally not doing that one. Absolutely not. Uh, establish command. Ooh, army command? Yeah, that's be good. You get more army XP gain, reverse rate, minimum command power, and whatnot. Yeah, that's pretty good overall. I don't think you can win here, can you? Well, maybe you can. Lowish and volunteers are literally just holding the line, and you guys are going to be the driving force behind us. Hopefully winning here. I gave you a ton of infantry here for a reason. Go. Uh, getting rid of the river is not a bad idea, too. We must liberate Cambodia. Yeah, we're doing well. Battlefield report. Although we've gone through many wars, achieved victories, and accumulated substantial experience, some of this experience has shown their obsolescence in the 21st century warfare. Despite the heroic battles fought by our military, outdated tactics and equipment have led to unnecessary defeats. According to the reports and practical needs, a reform and modernization of our military strategic issues for our country. Putting a modern people's army with an organized, streamlined, and strong, flexible structure, um, and a reasonable organizational structure among different components and forces, suited to operational art and weapons and equipment, ensuring synchronization and compatibility between the main force, local troops and militia, between the standing forces and reserve force, and between combat and combat support forces, as well as between the army and various military branches and services. The military must be equipped with modern weapons and equipment, ensuring synchronization and high mobility, enhancing the adaptability and versatility of each unit and force to meet the requirements of command and operational coordination in modern warfare. War never changes, warfare does. Look at that. Boom. Ensuring the supply. Call the Air Force. Okay, we can do that one and ensure the supply. Kinda sucks there's nothing here to read though. Oh, Indochina War. Though Chi Minh Trail, an intricate network of supply routes vital for a struggle during the resistance war against America, now serves as a lifeblood of another struggle against the forces threatening Cambodia and Laos. By sending vital equipment into support, we can uphold our legacy of resistance and solidarity, ensuring victory for our comrades. Send essential medical supplies to treat wounded soldiers and civilians. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Send additional manpower. Send Vietnamese volunteers to support the People's Republic of Cambodia and Laos. Establish supply depots. Construct supply depots on Ho Chi Minh Trail to ensure a safe flow of resources. So what happens if we don't do this? Because, I mean, the game's kind of screwed us over with that, so... If not, I'll redo it again, potentially, and just 
force it, force it through. Need more stability. Righteous War. I am glad, though, that we get some army XP here, though. Quite a bit of it, too, to boot. Batam bang. Batam bang. Good. Alright, so you're gonna hold for now. I'd say we've done quite well so far. For the national security of our fatherland, yeah. Good. Hey, Iraq wins against Syria. Yay! Using tanks, that's okay. Yeah, liberation of Cambodia. Well, I mean, did we not capitulate them? Basically, these guys are gonna be much more difficult to take out. Let us win here first. Ah, oh, the Yugoslav War is nice. A dream shattered. Very cool. Once again, concentrate your forces here. Concentrate them. And, oh, good. Yay, that looks better already, still. Hello? Are you going to do your job or what? Should I supply, mobilize the economy? I absolutely will not do that. I do not care what happens. We can't do that. Let's see what you can do here, though. So what do you got here? Question of the army. A-S-E-A-N. Member, I assume. Before the Indochina War. Show the supply. Call the Air Force. Oh, it took Bangkok, which is pretty good. Iraq and Iran are at war. Nice. Call in the Air Force. Alright, so I don't know if they'll be, really be able to hold Bangkok and whatnot, but I'm going to start going this direction here. They really actually do want to take out supply lines and whatnot. Go if you can for now. Anti air weapons, nice. Now you may go in as well. See what you can do. Can't do very much now, can we? But we're doing okay overall. <clears throat> Very close. Hey, victory. Look at that. A splendid day's arrived, comrades, as the imperialist puppets in Bangkok have retreated like cowardly dogs they are, and the royalist de de despots lie dead at the feet of the people's army. The newly established provisional go government of Bangkok after Chulalongkorn the flea has announced it surrendered in the face of total defeat in both Cambodia and Thailand as a so soaring casualty records of the royal army could become evident to the world, demonstrating the sheer scale of the disaster it was for Thailand and just how great the victory was for our forces. Across Vietnam, Laos, and now liberated Cambodia and Thailand, Millions cheer in celebration as broadcasts of proud Vietnamese soldiers march in the streets of Phong Pham in Bangkok, waving to the excited crowds, now free from the terror of the mad rat king and his goons. The international press has mixed responses, with many of the socialist countries of the world praising our victory and spread of communism, as opposed to the Western powers who critiqued our brutal and barbaric methods in warfare and called Thailand's collapse a humanitarian crisis, not even highlighting our efforts to help the Thai people. As for Thailand, we've begun the first steps in setting up a new socialist republic along, along the middle areas of the nation. The South turning to a new republic in wake of the fall of the central government, and the remnants of the royal army retreat further to the mountain region in the north to rage a guerrilla war against us. Our image as a liberated Southeast Asia has been emboldened in the hearts of our brave soldiers. The return to their families and hometowns, shrouded in gifts and praise from the communities all around the nation, has been bolstered on the Asian stage. As the red flag soars above Bangkok, perhaps a day will come when the entirety of Indochina shall be liberated. Great. 
After a long last, after the multiple battles, air fights, bombings, and economic hardship, we and our allies have succeeded against the forces of reactionaryism. The monarchist insurgents have started the war in Cambodia, the goal of destroying socialist Indochina. Only to leave socialism in Indochina entrenched further along with its expanding into Thailand. Vietnam can finally rest easy after experiencing four wars in the last decades. Why don't we get any political power from that? Why would we not get a giant political power boost? Bro, come on. Deploy garrison troops in Thailand. Uh, I like an economy that works. Like, we have nothing that works. We have no political power. We have no consumer goods. God, it sucks to be Vietnamese, man. Refound the Communist Party of Thailand. Push for United Front. I kind of like this one. People's Army of Thailand. War of Mediation. Launch modernization campaigns. Uh, our homeland is a sea. The redoubled steps on the resounding road. Elitize the army. Promote streamlining process. Uh, mobile forces, which makes sense for us to probably do that one. So we due to our name, a popular army. Which doesn't give you any negative penalties. This penalizes you a lot. Goes to consumer goods and recovery rate. And training time too, but still. If we get worse political power, which we already don't have. Massive arms productions. Reform the general staff. And the following sky. So, what you're telling me here? Go into this one first. Blood garrison troops in Thailand. <sighs> Although our victory against the anti communists ended with a friendly government being installed in Thailand, our Thai brothers still very much need our help in peacekeeping against bandits and reactionary remnants. I'll also be beneficial from training the new army of Thailand. So, can we not help them out here? Or? We hate both sides, but it doesn't really matter what, who we hate. Oh, you know what? We can actually send you here. There you go. Welcome aboard. The West imposes sanctions on us. Bruh. Who needs political power? I'll get some goods and whatnot. Yeah, who needed it, you know? We are found the Communist Party of Thailand. Yeah. Iran is striking with tons of fury. The rise of fighting in our party. Oh, crap. Are you kidding me? The recent sanctions have inflicted a significant blow on our economy, significantly complicating the process of our country's industrialization and modernization. Within the party, there have been various opinions expressing skepticism about the decision to intervene in Cambodia, leading to a noticeable internal division. Are they really hoping for a repeat of the situation in 78? How are we supposed to do this? You know what? At this point, I'm gonna I'm just gonna cheat now again. Um, like I did in the last episode, I'm just going to start giving myself political power and then give ourselves negative penalties because we literally don't make any political power a day. Like, I don't understand how we're supposed to be able to do any of this stuff. So, I will see you in just a little bit. And now we have a symbol of stability and unity after this one auto-completed. Chairman Nong Dok Man. So, yeah. And I gave myself a negative... I did these two because then these will be applied for a while. I don't think we're going to be able to reach this, which sucks. But whatever. Um, that is not my fault. That is, honestly, this is still being made. It's still being created. That's what I keep telling myself. Because all these political power issues should not be happening at all like this. Uh, address the economic difficulties? Yeah. And then, anything else for more political power? I feel like it's just we're just trying to not be defeated anymore. <laughs> Status quo in the party? Yeah, that's great for uh, political power. Yeah. Political power? Yeah, that'd be good to get to fast, though. Um, another research site would be nice. Promote socialist patriotism. Many people are concerned about a repeat of the 1980s. Why do we fight to liberate neighboring nations? When we are the ones who bear the consequences of war, when our children sacrifice themselves on the distant battlefield and they don't even die, lie down on the ancestral land. These are short-sighted thoughts that must not be spread among the people. It is patriotism, that sacred and noble yet simple and close, which has helped us stand firm against the flood, the iron wall formed by the brave men and women of our nation. As long as the socialist fatherland stands strong, as long as the red flag of the nation flutters over a bad in square, the spirit of patriotism uh, will continue uh, to shine and guide the nation through one challenge after another. It will march alongside us in this challenge as well. 
at least we're positive, you know. That's so bad saying that. Oh, we don't even have the power. I mean, there it is. Destroyed our consumer goods and whatnot, so what do you expect? Wow, they're actually forcing the attack. It's kind of crazy. I'm not gonna lie. Address economic difficulties. Dear comrades, we desire peace. We aspire for the stable, go stable development, but the reactionary era elements do not wish for that. They crave war, they seek to overthrow the social state, they aim to enslave our people. Yet once again, the brave soldiers of the Vietnamese People's Army, along with the comrades from Laos and Cambodia, have achieved a resounding victory against the insurgentist plots of reactionary forces. We have marched to Bangkok, raised a large flag over the Grand Palace, and liberated the people of Thailand from the bellicose insurgents. Say how the imperialist bourgeoisie refuses to relent. They are determined. Uh, not to let us be unjust sanctions and embargoes have been imposed directly targeting a post-war economy already struggling however in terms of scale this round of sanctions is significantly smaller than the average embargo imposed by the u.s in 1964 we can overcome it in the face of these hardships that befall our nation production and activities businesses and the livelihoods of our people suffer greatly i call upon all the entire political system and the people of all ages and classes to unite to consolidate our will and actions to resolve and strive to overcome any and all difficulties to push forward the consequences of war to recover to develop the economy and society and to achieve victory in implementing the resolutions of the 9th National Party Congress, we shall overcome. Embrace collectivism. Um, great. Uh, national unity. Embrace collectivism. Maintain the status quo. As long as we get some army speed, that's good too. Can we get involved in anything else there? Any other military conflicts, please? No? The Facebook is launched. A new social media website known as the Facebook has just been launched and is sweeping throughout the internet. The Facebook was originally created in 2003 by Harvard student Mark Zuckerberg under the name FaceMash and was laid out as an image board where users could post, chat, and reply. The team later shared his idea with four of the classmates who helped bring the site to fruition. Well, that's why it was originally meant for Harvard only, however. With an unexpected growth of popularity, it's been expanded to other universities throughout both the United States and Canada. The website seems to be an astounding success. Zuckerberg has received a lot of attention and rewards from it as shares are being bought en masse, especially after public release has been considered by the company. Might download it later. Download it. Rides in Central Highlands. The latest report indicates that a protest even larger than that of the 2001 is erupted in the Central Highlands. Large-scale protests have occurred in many provinces and cities, with some turning violence protests armed with makeshift weapons and vehicles attack law enforcement officials. Many people, especially those of the kin and ethnicity, have been subjugated, 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 uh, subjected to violence and vandalism, with reports of individuals being taken hostage and even fatalities due to assaults. Right now, a large group of protests of thousands of people is advancing towards the center of the Buon Mi Thuat City via National Highway 14. Police forces and uh, people's militias have attempted to disperse the crowd using tear gas and water cannons, but their efforts have been largely unsuccessful due to being overwhelmed in numbers. The leaders of military region 5 have declared a state of high readiness and said ready to intervene at any moment if ordered to do so. The current situation is extremely critical and requires swift measures to be taken to address it in the army. Negotiate. Patriotism and socialism. Originally, material conditions rendered imperative and extreme egoism. As time passed, the love of self, of self-preservation, and it found an increased security, an increased material welfare, and an extended fraternity. From that point, this transition was rapid. Patriotism ceased to be equivalent with barbarism. It rose, sublimated, uh, and to the height of the broadcast, a broadest humanity and a passion no longer to crush but to inspire, a passion to lead in the noblest thoughts, the noblest endeavors, and emulation of wisdom and virtue, a desire that one is own country, one's own country should be ornamented and garlanded, not with the spoils of other countries but with the great feats of its own people. Patriotism, in the proper sense, means a passion to prove one's own domicile and the way only one is such as possible today by elevating all others. The most patriotic nation is that is fired by the desire. The best patriot is he who is moved by the passion. Socialism is the idea that one alone can raise patriotism to its completest development. We see that the plight capitalism throws the country into, as material needs require the sufferings of other nations, gloats over their defeats, needs of their scalps, and as a matter of course, the human race being one, the capitalism of no nation can affect its own and another without inflicting it on its own. Capitalist patriotism is, accordingly, a contradiction in terms. Modern civilizations repudiate it. He cannot be a patriot without ceasing to be a socialist. Failure. Fall of Buon Ma Thuat. Despite the utmost efforts, the police and militia have been completely overwhelmed, some were even captured and murdered, as the unruly crowd surged towards Buon Ma Thuat. Upon the arrival, the situation deteriorated further as the inside of the populace, creating a chaotic scene throughout the city. 
What? Soon after, the orchestrators emerged into the spotlight. The Degar Central Highlands organization declared an independent state in the Central Highlands, with Mon Bois thought as the capital in Christianity as its state religion, calling for armed uprising in the Central Highlands. Currently, the military and mobile police forces are being urgently mobilized to quash this rebellion. Boop. Yeah, you know what? Boop. Don't really want to leave Iraq. Oh my god! Uncle Ho's revolutionary theory on, on proletarian nationalism. President Ho Chi Minh is a brilliant theoretician of the Vietnamese resolution. He has left behind a comprehensive and profound system of viewpoints on the fundamental issues of the Vietnamese revolution which encompasses the dual goals of achieving the true national independence and addressing democratic issues thoroughly while liberating the working people from oppression and exploitation. The central and consistent standpoint to resolve both these issues, according to President Ho Chi Minh, is that national independence is inherently linked with socialism. Thus, the issue of the nation must be tackled according to the perspective of the proletariat, over the past century. Under the leadership of the party and the principles of linking national independence with socialism, the Vietnamese nation has achieved monumental and historically significant victories. However, there have been recent arguments that the ideology of Ho Chi Minh is essentially nationalism, it removes an adjective that not only alters the meaning of the Vietnamese language, but also erases perfection and distorts the concept. The issue of the nation is always intertwined with class issues. Nationalism always defends interests based on the viewpoint of a certain class. There's no non-class-based nationalism, no vague nationalism. History has shown that since the appearance of nations until now, the dominant class representative of the mo mode of production have always held the power of the national dominance. The ruling class of the nation always solves national issues, protects independence, autonomy, and the nation's development according to its class image and interests. Thus, nationalism, with its nature as a political ideology and psychology demanding independence, self-reliant, and national development rights, always depends on the standpoint and viewpoint of the ruling class of the nation. Connected to the ruling classes that have held power over the nation or corresponding methods to protect the nation's independence, autonomy, and development, as well as resolve national issues. The feudal, bourgeois, and proletarian classes perceive and resolve national issues differently. Throughout history, traditional nationalist ideology has shown, has shown a long-standing patriotism of a nation, bourgeois national identity, proletarian nationalist ideology, Revolutionary nationalist ideology, ideology, large nation socialist nationalist ideology, narrow nationalist ideology, there is no non-class based nationalism. There hasn't been, and as long as there are classes, there won't be non-class based nationalism. Nationalism always carries a class nature. Nationalism always has, has an adjective, as mentioned. Holy crap. It's also essential to note that President Ho Chi Minh is attentive to the class essence when referring to nationalism. From the early years of embracing Marxism-Leninism, he clearly distinguished native nationalism, traditional nationalism in colonized countries from international nationalism, nationalism following the perspective of the proletarian class. He wrote, nationalism is a driving force of the nation, mobilizing native nationalism on behalf of international communism. When the nationalism wins, that nationalism will undoubtedly transform into international nationalism. He always emphasized that when dealing with national issues, one must stand firm on the proletarian standpoint, actively combat bourgeois nationalism, petty bourgeois nationalism, as well as in religious nationalism and revisionist nationalism. Therefore, asserting that Ho Chi Minh's ideology is essentially nationalism is an inaccurate and incomplete expression. This expression, whether intentionally or unintentionally, overlooks the class nature, obscures President Ho Chi Minh's standpoint and viewpoint on class issue in perceiving and resolving national issues in Vietnam. This expression strips away the revolutionary essence, the most progressive aspect of Ho Chi Minh's ideology, and diminishes Ho Chi Minh's ideology itself. As Lenin once warned, until they learn to distinguish the interests of those or the, these or those classes from those from other classes behind any sayings, any declarations, any promises that are of a moral, religious, political, or social nature, they'll always be fools deceived by others in by themselves in politics. Well said, Comrade Dong Gokung. Too long didn't read. Well said. Yeah, well said. Holy crap. Holy wall of text. He's almost an infantry leader, but we got bigger deals issues to deal with now. Interesting. What? Address the soldiers of the People's Army. First of all, I would like to send my warm greetings to the comrades in arms of the People's Army and police officers who have participated in the struggle. At first, we assess. The situation is tumultuous. Later, the situation developed one step further into the counter-revolutionary turmoil. Basically, we still have a large group of healthy comrades, comrades of the Liberation Army participating in the revolution who are still in command, and we can easily mobilize forces to handle the situation. The difficulty lies in the fact that we've never encountered the situation before, a group of people with malicious intent and mixed with a large number of the masses. The front lines are unclear, unable to distinguish the enemy, 
unable to engage even when there is an opportunity. Some governments believe that the root cause of the event lies in the treatment of the masses, reflecting the attitude of the masses towards the central government. In fact, beyond the masses, there are counter-revolutionary forces, foreign forces, and social scum. The goal is to disable the country and weaken the great national unity bloc. This is the core. Without understanding the fundamental issue, one can explain the central government's decision. During this time, many of the soldiers have been disarmed, injured, and brutally killed. The entanglement between the good and the bad, the people and the counter-revolutionary forces, makes it difficult for us to find a solution. Dealing with the issue is an extremely rigorous test for our military. Many comrades and soldiers have sacrificed. The young ones, just 19 and 9, 18 and 19, have come forward. They are the true sons and daughters of the people. The people's army is the offspring of the people, the ironclad fortress of the people and the nation. We must always remember that the people's army, army is the army of the people, the force protecting the country, protecting the people, protecting socialism, and we must never forget how brutal the enemy has been to our children. We must not show any forgiveness to them. In front of us are not the people, but the counter-revolutionary forces. We show no mercy. Great national unity block. Marxist-Leninism uh, holds that revolution is the cause of the masses and the people are creators of the history. Uh, oh crap. The, the proletariat, in order to fulfill its role as the leader of the revolution, must become a national force and forge an alliance between the workers and the peasants as a basis for building a powerful revolutionary movement. Marxism-Leninism has shown uh, oppressed nations the path of self-liberation. Lenin believed that this class solidarity, particularly the alliance between the working class and the peasantry, is crucial to the success of the socialist revolution. He emphasized that without the consent and support of the majority of the working people, led by the vanguard of the proletariat, the socialist revolution cannot be achieved. Ho Chi Minh's ideology on national unity reflects his perspectives, positions, worldview, philosophy of life, and scientific revolutionary methods of Marxism and Leninism, which are con concretized in appoints principles and methods of gathering, mobilizing, and harnessing the strength of various social classes, organizing revolutionary forces, and fostering international solidarity to maximize the immense power of national unity. It emphasizes that the greatest strength lies in the people, stating that there's nothing more precious in the sky than the people, and in the world there's nothing stronger than the united forces of the people. Unity among the world people will generate this greatest strength. He affirms that national unity means, first and foremost, the unity of the majority of the people, of which the majority of our people are workers, peasants, and other working classes. This is the foundation of national unity, like the foundation of a house, the root of a tree. Once the foundation is solved, the good root is established, and must also unite with other working classes. Anyone who honestly advocates peace, unity, independence, and democracy, even if they were once our ad adversaries, we must sincerely unite with them. Ho Chi Minh stresses that national unity is not only the top objective and task of the party, but also the top objective and task of the entire nation. The renewal policy has initiated a new era of buildings and strengthening national unity based on the ideology of Ho Chi Minh. It involves innovating economic thinking, proposing the direction of developing a multi-sectoral economy where the state-owned economy plays a leading role, valuing the legitimate and lawful interests of laborers, aiming to link and harness the potential of all social strata in the nation building and defense. It means paying more attention to class policies, including policies for each class, and policies to handle the relationship between class interests and national policies, emphasizing the placement of human beings at the center of the economic and social policies, proactively planning the development of the class structure of the new society, concretizing and properly implementing national and religious freedom policies. It also entails strengthening democracy in society, consolidating the alliance between the workers and the great national unity. Unity, unity, great unity. Success, success, great success. Good God, we'll see. Um. I do have a ton of units. Of course, the Iraqis killed off a lot of their own guys, too, unfortunately. Maintain status quo. But, God, they're learning a lot. Happy April 1st, everybody. Indo-Pakistani War. We'll have to get involved in that, but we'll see. And then we'd have to do strength and father in front. Love to be able to just encircle these guys here, but we'll see. Okay, we did. Nice job, guys.
Chinese Rebellion in India, nice. is becoming a desert fox as well. Our guy Ngo Zhuanglish. Desert fox. 20% done. Not much. Um, question of the army modernization. How's India looking? Pretty divided. Kuwait. Nice. Good stuff. Good, good, good. Hey, Iraq is looking better now. Question of auto modernization, minor anti corruption campaign, all the citizens must know their duty, and then United Party. Dreams of the next industrial powerhouse, focus on self reliance, let's go labor forces, best in science and technology would be really good to get next. Cooperation with economic sectors, Southeast Asian mutual economic assistance organization, and all party members engage in private business. We'll see about that one. Currently, the military is undergoing comprehensive modernization to build an elite and modern force. However, given the difficult economic situation, many argue that we should reduce the defense budget to prioritize economic recovery. On the other hand, there are many options suggesting that, given the unpredictable post war regional dynamics, uh, imperialist forces will seek revenge and therefore must further accelerate the modernization of military. Process military. That's not bad. Uh, we already don't have consumer goods. Like, seriously. Like, it's a complete destroyed us. Maintain the current pace. Slow down the modernization drive. Half army. Halt army modernization. Accelerate the process. You know, at this point, I don't even know what, why I'm fighting for like this political power stuff. Monthly change. Let me maintain the course. Yeah. Lot people national defense. Yeah, we'll do that one. Yeah, we're doing alright though. We're actually making it circle months and we're doing pretty decently so far. That bombardment of Yongpyang. How's this going? Because we gotta keep an eye on all this stuff here. We're gonna take whatever advantage that we can get, my friends. Whew. DMZ. Could not win there, that's unfortunate. All people national defense. Building a comprehensive national defense system is a fundamental guiding principle for constructing a country's defense. Our responsibility is shared by the entire populace and the political system, but the armed forces is the backbone. Looking ahead. Oh, God. The global and regional security and political situations are rapidly evolving and becoming increasingly complex, making predictions are difficult. Strategic competition among major powers, armed conflicts, regional wars are on the rise and hard to control. The South China Sea poses many risks of escalating conflicts domestically and the four dangers that our parties previously warned about still exist and are likely to become more complex and intense. Still, signs of political, ethical, and lifestyle degradation, self-evolution, and self-transformation transformation within the party, as well as cultural and social tensions will continue to evolve in complex ways. The rich poor divide is also tending to increase, posing a direct threat to the survival of the regime if not prevented and pushed back. Furthermore, hostile and reactionary forces continue to strengthen their sabotage against the party, aiming to divide the national unity bloc and now so does score between the people and the party, the state and the military, which affects the comprehensive strength of the country. Therefore, the mission of the national defense is not only to safeguard the independence, sovereignty, unity, and territorial integrity of the fatherland, but also protect the social regime and not to only fight against the external enemies, but also combat internal foes. Hence, it is emphasized that all people a national defense system must be built. This means that the people must be the subject of national defense, and everyone has the responsibility and obligation to participate in building a strong and comprehensive national defense system. 
The alveolar and comprehensive nature are closely interrelated, and the foundation of the overall strength of the comprehensive national defense system, meeting the requirements, ensures stability for national development and readiness to defeat invading enemies, thereby firmly protecting the soldiers following. Interesting. Yet another door war in our doorsteps. What another sapping? Just under a month, warfare is once again erupted in Korea, drawing intervention in most East Asian countries and causing a global economic downturn. Vietnam is not exempt from this. As a country with deep economic ties to China, China's involvement in a large-scale continental war stalled trade relations between two nations, significantly impacting the no, national economy. To address this, it must immediately engage in negotiations with China on this matter. However, it's highly likely that China will not easily accept her demands and may require some assistance in the war they are involved in. Additionally, there are opinion suggestions are suggesting that it is best for the maintain a neutral stance on the conflict, not to jeopardize a hard-won relationship with the capitalist countries. Furthermore, maintaining a neutral position may, may enhance our position in the international arena, prevent our people from getting involved in another war, ensuring internal security. Asia's in flames. Well, I mean, the Westerners embargoed us, so, so much for trying to, you know, talk to them. So, whatever. Um, do we have something else here we can do? Or... We still want to do United Party. Death Party Congress. I wish false. Blazing Furnace Campaign. Target Saigon Clique. Denounce Revisionism. Vietnamese Path Socialism. No, I don't see anything here, so. Dreams of Industrial Powerhouse. Well, we can dream it. But whatever. Now it's out down here, though. And uh, Iran. Well, if I can have a crash, you want to this one, please go ahead. I mean, at this point, it doesn't matter. We have nothing we can use, anyways. Civil discontent. Well, that's not good, too. Oh, Asian Flames is over here now. Negotiations with China. Vietnamese intervention. Critical support for the DPRK. Increase agricultural exports to China. Stabilize the people. At rally our allies in New China. United against imperialism. Reaffirming our neutrality. Mass evacuation campaign. Send humanitarian aid. Our deepest concern. Well, truth be told, they embargoed us. So, I mean, a Western embargo, they, they didn't want us to be around. So, negotiating with China, with China. So, what's the point of a. Uh, are, oh, are you guys at war? Oh. Oh, you're also at war with Japan. And these guys. Well. I don't really want to join their war, though. Hmm. Civil discontent. We went pretty neutral in the beginning. Critical support for the DPRK. Korean assistance stabilize the people. United against imperialism. Great Asian wars ongoing. Hmm. We, really, we don't want to isolate ourselves, so I guess that makes sense. I, mean, I like being in Iraq and doing all this stuff here, but still. We'll continue up out. Who knows who's going to win in the end of this place. China agrees on economic cooperation. News of China's agreement to our economic proposal is met with cautious optimism in Hanoi. The prospect of increased agricultural exports and resource imports could defortify Vietnam's position amidst the chaos of the Great Asian War. However, the shadows of the South China Sea cast a looming concern. Truly solidified alliance with China, the status of the disputed islands must be addressed, we must demand the return of the Parcel Islands, spread of the islands, and all of the contested territories in Southeast Asia, Southeast China Sea. The resolution. Now the certain territorial claims will become a pivotal point in the negotiations, and the outcome will shape the course of involvement in the war. We must stand firm. Critical support for the DPRK. Increase agricultural exports to China. Rally our allies in China. They all prefer a compromise. 
Recognition or recognize the need for middle ground, China supports or suggests a compromise to Vietnam. The proposal involves transferring uh, the disputed islands to us while retaining docking rights for Chinese naval vessels, aiming for a balanced solution that serves both nations' interests. No. Oh, yeah, that's fine. More offers. China decides to expand the compromise to offer joint oil exploitation in the South China Sea. Sure. Look at that. Yay! Good. Execution of non-com. After several trial incidents, a decision carried the death penalty for a throng von Kahn was issued. The Ho Chi Minh City Police Department deployed the execution to ensure that absolute safety and meticulous legal preparations were undertaken. A series of technical procedures were completed a day before transferring the prisoners from the detention center in Tiangyang to Chia Hua Detention Center. At 5 a.m., the convoy was carrying the death row inmates, including non com and four other accomplices. Enter the execution grounds uh, in Long Bin Ward. Pre execution procedures have been completed, though not publicly disclosed. At around, around the grounds, more than 200 citizens, relatives of the convicts, and some who had been victims of a non coms criminal gang awaited the moment of reckoning for the perpetrators. The execution squad formed a line and advanced towards the five condemned individuals. The squad leader gave the order to whisper, Take your positions, prepare, fire. The rifles with bayonets were raised to eye level by the marksmen. Immediately after the execution order, a series of shots rang out, harsh, chilling, and ruthless. Then came five final mercy shots for the condemned. The forensic doctor fulfilled their duty, reporting to the execution council all five convicts have died. By 5.45 a.m., the execution team had completed the enforcement of the law. Good, but we're going to end it there. This has been a, one heck of a struggle for us for Vietnam. Never have, you literally don't have any uh, consumer goods. I guess, well, North Korea already fell. Or North, no, South Korea fell. South Korea's fallen. Cool. You have no consumer goods, no political power, nothing here. India's dying. I'm okay with that. Um, but we're having fun in Iraq, and that's what matters. As long as we have fun, we won. So, if you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. And I also keep marching on forward to make sure that Vietnam's the best in Southeast Asia. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.